Afternoon, Gary. Hey, Mark. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, what's the dynamic been like in training this week off the back of the huge result against Leeds, 39 points on the board, and I guess the, the pressure valve that is trying to survive in the Premier League just gets released a little bit. Have you seen that in training? Have you seen a, a more freedom about the players, a, a focused enjoyment, perhaps? Yeah, I, I've been impressed with them this week, actually. They, obviously, they, they had a couple of days off after what was a a big win for us and, and a big week. So, um, yeah, they've come back in. We've spoken about what the next four games need to look like for us. Um, but, of course, they've, they've, they have earned the right to to feel a little bit less pressure for the next four games. So, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing them perform. Still a lot of points still available to us. And, um, yeah, of course, as the as the head coach of the team, desperate to put as many points on the board as possible, regardless of, of the situation. So... Yeah, really want to finish the season strong and then take that into the into the summer break with us. Bournemouth's highest ever points total in the Premier League is 45 points. You're currently on 39 with four to go. So creating a new piece of history for this football club is still very attainable. Is that now the new target? No, the target's still the same. It's still Chelsea. Um, so, yeah I, yeah, I mean, people ask me points, tallies all season, really, what I felt we'd need to stay up and... Um, now you guys are trying to get me to commit to another one, um, but no, it's just yeah, trying to win, trying to beat Chelsea at the weekend, um, add another three points, and yeah, my my aim is to get as many as we can. If that's more than forty five, more than forty six, great. If if it means we have to work our socks off and we can only get forty two, forty three, then then so be it. But we'll be yeah, we'll be giving everything we can as as we have done to to try and put as many on the board as possible. 12 games ago, you were second bottom in the Premier League with just 18 points on the board. What have you done to, to transform this club in that short space of time? Yeah, no, we haven't, we haven't changed too much, if I'm honest. I think we've, um, we've spent, obviously, longer together. The lads, yeah, the lads are clearer on things that we work on and um, we've had a stronger squad available. Injuries, um, January arrivals, um, even some of the lads that are fit, they are even Dom has had a stop-start season training-wise. He's, he's been fit for a lot of football matches, but has missed a lot of training in the last few weeks. He's trained almost every day, um, and you see an extra sharpness to him when, when that's the case. So, yeah, just a, a few small things, and the, the difference between winning and losing is so so small, so fine, the margins, that if we just increase what we do by 5%, it, it can easily turn losses into wins. So um, that, that, that's been the the real key um, and now obviously the task is can we be consistent and, and can we keep it where it is As you say Chelsea up next in the Premier League if someone had said to you when you first take over uh, as Bournemouth manager that you would be able to go above Chelsea in this fixture what would you have said? Yeah of, of course I wouldn't have believed them I think yeah not not because of where we are really but because of where Chelsea are I think everybody in the yeah, everybody in the country is surprised that, that it hasn't really happened for Chelsea with the high levels that they set themselves, it's been it's been a disappointing season so far for them. Um, but yeah, I still think they'll be coming here with, especially the players and an eye on next season and making sure they finish this season strongly. Um, so it's, they're obviously a dangerous team, fantastic players. Watched a lot of their recent games and um, yeah, obviously they've they've not managed to win one recently. But yeah, they still have some. Obviously, they still have some world class players that can cause you problems. Obviously, Frank's someone you know, played against. Can you identify with, with the, the predicament that he's in at the minute? Because he's gone into that football club to try and help. They've lost six out of six. There was a period this season where you'd lost six out of six. And as a manager, you're searching for answers. You're maybe trying to tweak things, change things. Can you identify with the situation he's in? Yeah, I think it, it was. it's a tough ask to go in there uh, at the time he did. Um, obviously, there's... It's hard to know because we, we obviously, like you, I hear noises that come out of there, but you don't know how accurate they are. So, keen not to comment on it too much because I don't know enough. But from the outside looking in, it looked like a tough ask for him. Graham Potter is a fantastic coach, and there still seem to be some issues there um, while Graham was there. Um, and yeah, similar. So, Fra Frank has gone in and um, hasn't managed to turn it around yet. Um, but yeah, he's not been in there very long. You know, he hasn't had much time to to turn things around so um, had a fantastic playing career he's a good coach he's seen enough of his teams even thinking back to when I was still playing and he was in charge at Derby uh, played some fantastic stuff um, managed to get Everton out of a sticky situation last season um, 
so yeah, a, a lot of respect for what Frank has achieved in in the game. Um, and yeah, and, and looking forward to tomorrow. I think it's the third time that I get to go up against him this season. Obviously, a lot of people will look at the, the table, look at the, the form guide, and they'll expect Bournemouth to perhaps be favourites, win the game, which sounds bizarre in itself. But are Chelsea still very dangerous, bearing in mind they've got a squad that's worth not far off a billion quid? They spent 600 million in two windows. Is that kind of an attitude very dangerous against the Chelsea side? Yeah, well, we're definitely not favourites for tomorrow. Absolutely no chance. Chelsea are a, a very good side with fantastic players. Um, it hasn't clicked yet. If it clicks tomorrow, it's it's a tough afternoon for the lads and we need to be at 100% as we have been for the last few to, to give Chelsea a real good game. So, yeah, I think it would be silly of us or anyone to think that we're a better side than Chelsea going into this football match. They're, um, yeah, they're still very, very dangerous, as you said. They've got fantastic players all over the pitch, World Cup winners, um, Thiago Silva, absolute superstar, fantastic centre-back. So... Yeah, they have, a, they have a good side and, and when it starts to click for them, I'm sure they'll be very, very dangerous. And just finally for me, nominated for Manager of the Month in April. It's not bad. No, yeah, yeah, of course. I think um, I was more more pleased for, for Tav and Dom, really. I think Dom's, Dom's put in so much work this year. Um, obviously, some of it has been fairly thankless earlier in the season where he... He was working his socks off and wasn't getting too much reward. Obviously, I was aware of the good work that he was doing, but maybe from outside, people wouldn't have been as much. Um, so, yeah, for Dom to get some recognition for the work he's put in over the, the whole season, really, but for it to come to light in, in the month of April is fantastic. And and delighted for Tav because he's um, spoke about him already, I think, in my last one, but his, his impact on the points tally has been huge for um, a guy that's moved up to the Premier League for the first time. Is still very young, has had a real tough season individually, injury-wise. Um, so yeah, so to have had the impact and that goal against Fulham was huge. It was it was a massive goal. So um, for for Tav and Dom to both be recognised and be up for awards this month is yeah credit to them and sort of shows the the direction that the club has has moved in recently. Thank you, Gary. Just staying on the Marcus Tavernier theme, given that your main goal of the season has been achieved, do you think realistically we'll see him again this season with that hamstring issue? Yeah, we're still not clear on exactly how long it would be. Even yeah, so if we were scrapping for points and um, desperate to stay in the Premier League, um, I'm still not sure. We haven't had enough of the information back to to let you know exactly when it would be. Um, but of course, now that the yeah, that now the situation has changed, there's no, there will be no rush. So if it's three weeks that he should be out and we need to take four, we'll we'll take four. There's, Whereas before it was like, right, it's three weeks, let's get him back for this game, let's see if he can have an impact again, whereas obviously that has, that's changed. So, um, yeah, my, my real focus at, at this moment, if I'm honest with Tav, is to make sure he's absolutely spot on by July the 1st and we can get a real good pre-season into him. But that doesn't mean that we've seen the end of him this season. It might be that it's a couple of weeks and he's feeling fantastic and, and yeah, and we'll see him back on the pitch. And would all of those things apply to Hamid Traore as well? Yeah, it's slightly different because he's... Um, obviously Tavs is a muscle injury that um, he's had a few times whereas Junior was, was a contact where he's yeah he's, he's hurt his foot so um, would be different there wouldn't be as much risk attached to um, to putting Junior back on the pitch so hopefully I, I expect us to see Junior back on the pitch this season and Kiefer Moore came off last week with a concussion issue given the concussion protocols and the sensitivities around that is he one that will not be allowed to play tomorrow? Yeah, he's not available tomorrow, so he's he's managed to do some training within the, the guidelines that were given. Um, but yeah, as we played, I think because the last game was Sunday last week, it means that he wouldn't be available until this Sunday. So he'll miss um, yeah he'll miss Saturday's game. Uh, despite Mark's best efforts to coax you into setting a, a new record points target as a, as a motivation for the rest of the season, how much of this group? How how do they need? tangible targets like the tangible target first of all is stay in the division for the next four games what are you setting them as apart from being the best version of themselves and all that kind of stuff yeah so that that's the main thing really around just yeah we're professional footballers and we've set ourselves at a high level all season um obviously sometimes it's led to results sometimes it hasn't but let, let's not finish like when you come in at five o'clock if you've lost two nil you're still going to feel terrible lads regardless of whether we're on 39 or whether we were on 32 or whatever it is losing a football match 
the other team getting the better of you, the other coach getting the better of me, you're still going to feel terrible at that point. So let's do whatever we can do and work our socks off to to make sure we enjoy the next four weeks. Um, and then, as as you say, I think the the points tallies and things we can look to get to. I think even in this game, I don't, I don't think I think we could get to 21 points from 10 games. Um, in the Premier League, which has never been done before either by Bournemouth. So in this in this game alone against Chelsea, if we can win, I think it'll be the best points return for a 10-game Premier League run. Um, so yeah, there are some things that we can try and really set ourselves to achieve, but um, all around Chelsea at the moment, rather than looking ahead to Palace, Man United and Everton. I saw an article, and lots of articles at this stage of the season, about lists about the season and things, but it had you on the list as Bournemouth as one of the biggest overachievers of the season. Do you feel a sense of overachievement or do you find that a bit disrespectful? Uh, I understand why, because I think everybody outside of Bournemouth definitely thinks we've overachieved. Um, I expected myself and the group to stay in the Premier League. So, um, I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's all but done. It's all but confirmed. So, yeah, we've only achieved what I thought we would. Of course, if we can finish the season incredibly strongly and finish high up the Premier League table... Maybe that is further than I thought we would go. I, I, I expected us to be in a scrap this year. Um, I expected us to be in and around it. I expected us to show enough to get out of it. Um, but the fact that we've managed to remove ourselves slightly um, at this point probably puts us slightly ahead of the, the curve that, that many expected us to be on. And with your wins over Liverpool and, and Spurs and your performance at Arsenal, of course, has that shaken off the tag that many have had, including some of us, of course, about the fact that these games against the likes of Chelsea have been free hits in the past, but they shouldn't be anymore? Um, yeah, no, I think it depends where you are. I think because of our situation and we've had some disappointing results where you, you can lose at home to Crystal Palace because you don't perform or you go away to Brentford, which people think, oh yeah, you could get something there and we haven't got much of a, a squad available. So you, you have to try and take advantage of all of them. So if, it, if it's Tottenham, you find Tottenham on a slightly off day and you've got a great squad available to you, yeah, it, it's today, lads. It doesn't matter who we've got. It's li literally, let's let's put some points on the ball today. So could that be tomorrow? Possibly. Chelsea will have their own say and their own thoughts on, on how they go about it. But from our point of view, it's a, it's a home game. Um, we've just won two on the trot. And um, the squad's in a good place injury-wise. So, um, yeah, hoping that they can maintain the level that they've set recently. Finally for me, Bill Foley was obviously here last week and was here for the uh, the Leeds game as well. I know it's been hard to fit in lengthy chats with him in the previous times due to your schedule, but did you manage to have a finally a good chat with him and have you booked yourself a, a celebratory trip to Vegas? Uh, no, I haven't booked any trips yet. I think, um, yeah, it was good, obviously, for Bill to be here on such a, a big win for us that was fairly decisive probably in our in the, the status of the club and what league we're going to be in so um yeah got to speak to him after and um congratulate each other on a job well done so far but um yeah as is with football it, it starts again so um yeah from this point onwards we're looking to finish the season strongly and then make sure that we start next season correctly um big summer ahead big pre-season for some of the players so um yeah, not too not too many thoughts on holidays and trips for me. Just around the next four, and then making sure that pre-season is is spot on and gets us ready for for another big season.